Hi friends. Okay, we're going to start by reviewing some of our artists. So this guy's name was Kandinsky. Yeah, say that with me two times. Kandinsky, Kandinsky. And his art was stuff you would never see in real life. It came from his imagination. And so we call it abstract. Will you say that with me two times? Abstract, abstract. Good. Okay. This girl's name was Georgia O'Keefe. And she painted flowers, really big flowers that went off the edges of the paper and it felt like you're right inside the flower. Good, and here's some more of her paintings. Cool. All right. This guy's name was Henry Matisse. And what did he use to show emotion? That's right, he used color. But when he got old, what happened to his, oh, missed one. What happened to his hands? He got arthritis and he couldn't use them to hold a paintbrush. So he started using scissors and glue. That's right. And what do we call this picture? The snail. Can you see the antenna right there? And there's his head and there's the shell. The snail. Good. Okay. What is the word that means you could draw a line down the middle and it's the same on both sides? Symmetry. Good. Say it with me three times. Symmetry. 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 Excellent. Okay. This guy's name was Grant Wood. That's right. And he was a regionalist, which meant that they thought that you should stay close to your home and paint the things that you know. And so he was out on a ride one day and he saw a house with this window. It had this really cool window. It's called a Gothic arch. Do you remember where you've seen windows like that? On the Provo City Center Temple? Yeah, they have Gothic arches like that. And so he wanted to paint the house that that window was on. And then he painted two people that might have lived in that house. And do you remember how you painted a house? Yeah, so because this is a gothic window, a gothic arch, this painting is called American Gothic. Yeah. All right. This is kinesthetic, kinetic art. It means it uses motion. So this is a mobile that would hang and those things spin in the air. And this is art that they made by spinning the paper when they dropped the paint on it. Do you remember when we did that? Look, I have a few of your samples. Do you remember when you dropped the paint while the paper was spinning? They turned out pretty cool, didn't they? Okay, so we did kinetic art. That means that there's motion. And then, oh, do you remember this guy? Well, this is a painting that he painted. This is him right here. This is his self-portrait. His name was Leonardo da Vinci. And he painted this really famous painting. Do you remember what it was called? The Mona Lisa, right. And the thing that he said was, the more you know, the better you will paint. And he used to take all sorts of measurements to help um, figure out how to draw. Do you remember how we measured our faces and we figured out that the eyes go right in the middle, right? Like here's the top of the head, here's the bottom, and the eyes are right in the middle. Yeah, and so he used those measurements to make this painting of this girl. It's called the Mona Lisa. Okay, today we're going to talk we're getting ready for Easter. I'm so excited for Easter on Sunday. I might have to send you a video of my cool um, Easter crush I just got this year. I'm so excited about it. But they used to, artists, well, and they still do, but for a long time, 
only the only people who would pay money for artists to live off of was the church and um, really rich people would have their their paintings painted so um, a lot of art there was a period of time where almost all the art was religious art and it would they would paint stories from the Bible so religious art is a really important movement you can see this is a stained glass window and there's Jesus praying in Gethsemane and there are his disciples you know that story and here's another painting of Jesus and his disciples did you know they used to paint to show that somebody was holy and righteous especially the Savior or the or his mother they would paint this circle around their head that meant kind of like they had light coming from them. Kind of like how we talked about that they often would paint angels with wings to show that they could fly. It wasn't like an exact representation, but it had a meaning. So here's another painting of Jesus when he was a baby and Mary, his mother. And this is a painting of Jesus coming out of the tomb. And you can see here the angels have wings. Not because angels really have wings, but because they can fly and that shows that they're angels, right? And here's Jesus and there's the light behind his head. So that's called religious art. And so since Sunday is Easter, we are going to make a painting of the resurrection. We're going to paint the empty tomb. So let me show you what you need. All right. You're going to need to find a few things in your supplies. You're going to need this paper that we already painted of the sky, and it has a square drawn on it with pencil. And you're going to need your impasto with the drawing on the back. And you're going to need your large circle sponge. You need some glue. You need a paintbrush, the little one. You're going to need some scissors, and you're going to need paint. You're going to need a black paint, you're going to need purple, pink, yellow, and green. All right, first thing you're going to do yeah, is on your blue paper, you're going to see that black, or not black, see that square? We're going to paint it black. Because that's going to be the inside of here. I'm going to put it up here so you can see what I'm doing. This is going to be the inside of the tomb. And there's no sunlight in there. So we're going to paint it black. And we want to paint the whole thing black and even go on the outside of the edges. So there's no, if you, you like if you accidentally paint your, or cut your hole opening a little bigger. So paint this all black and go outside the line a little bit. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to let that dry. And you're going to want to rinse out your paintbrush. So while that's drying, you're going to take your impasto paper and you're going to cut on these lines. You're going to cut the arch. You're going to cut that arch. You're going to cut this right here. That's the doorway, and this is the outside of the tomb, and then this is the stone that was rolled away. Okay, so cut those out. While you're cutting, I already cut mine out. You're gonna cut them out, and you're gonna glue them on. So I'll glue mine on. can see that the doorway is dark. I'm going to put my magnet on top of there. I'll hold that on. We've got the doorway, that. Okay, Easter Sunday was such a special day. So Jesus had been crucified on Friday and he was in the tomb all day on Saturday and the stone was covering the door. And on Sunday morning, so we want it to be morning. We're gonna make the sun just rising. 
So this is going to be our sun, and we have yellow paint. There we go. Let's put our sun so it's coming up in the sky. We don't want it way up high in the sky, but we just want it like right over here. We bend it down soft. There's our sun on Easter Sunday. There's our sun, and then this is in the springtime, so let's add some grass. Get our paintbrush and get some green, and we're gonna draw some grass. We paint some grass right here. And let's paint it growing across here too. There's my grass. grass all the way across. And then we're going to need some flowers because it's springtime. And that's what your other colors are for. And, oh, I forgot to tell you, you need your q-tips. You have two q-tips in your art thing. So we're going to make some yellow flowers. And if you have yellow hair, you're going to want to save your yellow because we use it when we paint our self-portraits. So put the lid back on your yellow. But pink and purple we won't use again. So you can just throw those away when we're done. Okay, let's put some purple flowers around here. And then some pink ones. Okay, so we were talking about Jesus. He was crucified on Friday. And then Saturday he was in the tomb. And so the stone was covering the door of the tomb. But on Sunday morning, the angels came and they rolled the stone away from the door. So we need to put the stone rolled away. So you can put it anywhere you want, as long as it's on the ground, not floating in the sky. We want it on the ground anywhere that's not covering the door. So you can put it over on this side, or you can roll it over here. How far do you think the angels rolled the stone? They rolled the stone away. Oh, this will work better on yours because your paper will be flat. And then Jesus was resurrected and he came forth out of the tomb. I'm so grateful that he was resurrected. I'm so grateful for Easter. And I'm so grateful to be your preschool teacher. I hope you have a wonderful Easter. And I hope you will help tell the story of the resurrection to your family. And you can use your painting to do it. <laughs>